Hi guys. So, uh, happy Easter to those who celebrate. Uh, we had a quiet day here, lots of eating and napping and relaxing and sort of finally feeling like a, I don't know, a little bit of normalcy, um, as things go, hanging out with family. Um, day 12, y'all, day 12. I think this is the longest I've stuck out one of these challenges before. I'm always like, oh, I'm going to do them. And then it's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm too busy to do them. And I'm, I'm not letting myself off the hook this time. I'm, I'm doing it, going all the way through. Um, so tonight I want to read yet another brilliant poet, um, Marie Howe. And I want to read from, from her book, What the Living Do. Ooh, that light. Always so bright. Um, the title poem of this book is just stunningly deep and gorgeous, and you know the imagery um, builds so subtly into the real sadness uh, of loss in this book. Um, but I wanted to read one tonight that, while it's it's a little sad, you know, there's also this sort of hopeful connection in it that uh, I think many of us would connect to right now um, of spending time with family um, and trying to keep in touch with people and having maintaining our sense of community so this is uh, if you want to check it out so it's from Marie Howe's What the Living Do it's on page 35 and it's called The Game The Game and on certain nights, maybe once or twice a year, I'd carry the baby down and all the kids would come, all nine of us together, and we'd build a town in the basement from boxes and blankets and overturned chairs. And some lived under the pool table or in the bathroom or in the boiler room or in the toy cupboard under the stairs. And you could be a man, or a woman, or a husband, or a wife, or a child. And as we bustled around like a day in the village, oh, and we bustled around like a day in the village until one of us turned off the lights, switch by switch, and slowly it became night and the people slept. Our parents were upstairs with company or not fighting, and one of us, it was usually a boy, became the town crier, and he walked around our little sleeping population and told the hours with his voice, and this was the game. Nine o'clock and all is well, he'd say, walking like a constable we must have seen in a movie. And what we called an hour passed. Ten o'clock and all is well, and maybe somebody stirred in her sleep or a grown-up baby cried and was comforted. Eleven o'clock and all is well. Twelve o'clock. One o'clock. Two o'clock. And it went on like that through the night we made up until we could pretend it was morning. <sighs> and how many of us are pretending it's morning right now? Just pretending that it's going to be okay. We're going to be able to just hop out and go to the grocery store. Um, yeah. <sighs> On that note, I hope you all had a very pleasant Easter. I hope you had a chance to contact your families and say you loved them and catch up. And uh, till tomorrow, guys, have a good night. All's well.